So you folks are on the front lines of an extremely complicated oh, find a solution yes, to this yes. thing. Mm-hmm. So when you're talking to, you know, normal people like, say, me, <laughs> how would you describe what's out there right now that you are working on that looks like it could possibly work as reform? What is what is the legislation? What a, you know, what's your mission in terms of Providing legislation, yeah, I want to hear from in. both of you. So. Well, I can speak to what's going on on the state level right now. That's, um, a, that's a good start. There, there are a lot of different sort of methods to solving the health care reform issue. There's not really going to be one perfect plan. Okay. But right now what's going on on the state level is there's a, a bill that just passed the Senate, um, House Bill, I believe it's 3923. Mm-hmm. It did pass the Senate. Oh, that's it's very exciting, exciting actually, that for is us. very exciting. And what it did was it created, um, it actually started to regulate the individual insurance market in the state of Illinois, which the state of Illinois, prior to this bill, had been known as the Wild West for individual insurance uh-huh. companies, or for companies that insured people individually outside of their employment situation. But what does that look like? The Wild West, as far as individual insurance means, the Wild West means goes. that there anything goes. There are no regulations, and the regulatory body that exists doesn't have anything to enforce. No teeth. No teeth. Uh huh. So this bill actually put four limitations on that. And the two most important said that um, doctors had the right to decide whether or not you needed mental health care and the insurance company couldn't deny it. Very good. The other really big important piece that that I view as important is that um, for every seventy for every dollar that an insurance company gets from you, seventy five cents of it has to be spent on health care costs, not profit, not administrative costs. So it really focused the money that you're spending on your insurance towards health care instead of profit. Can you um, uh, enlighten us about why is it important that doctors get to decide whether or not a patient needs mental health coverage or care? Sure. Rather than the insurance, what what has been happening? That is what has been happening is that me- mental health is is an ongoing difficulty in terms of insurance companies because a lot of times they will deny coverage uh, based on pre-existing conditions. Um, you know, you go and you see a therapist once for a, a very small issue, and and then you're not allowed to see a therapist ever again. Mm-hmm. But in this instance, a doctor could say that you need mental health treatment, and they would not be able to deny that coverage. Wow. Okay, so so this bill passed. The Senate. The Senate. So you have to yet reach the uh, House in right. the legislature. Well, it started in the House. It went to the Senate. It got called ye- yesterday. Very exciting. It's I didn't very know. exciting. We're very excited about it. Um, and um, and so I think now it's just waiting for the governor to well, sign Well, th- do they have to reconcile anything? And then it's on the way to the governor? Or? I'm not sure. Okay. It 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 ought to be it ought to be ready for signature soon. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. That is really good news, and mm-hmm. how timely of us to be sitting here go. talking yes, exactly, about it. Yes, exactly, actually. Okay, so um, we we can get to the bigger picture in terms of, you know, it, it doesn't take much to say in the big picture, the U.S., one of the biggest democracies in the world, and the Western, uh, of the Western, uh, what they call democracies, um, has the worst health care. Yes. Pretty much. Um, well, per not the services, but certainly the access. The access, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, one of your missions would be to, of course, spread out access, uh, let access uh, to health care be available to everyone, mm-hmm. regardless of income. And, of course, the big question is, how do we pay for it? Mm. Um, Ooh. Now, if we if we go beyond uh, just this, the story that um, you just shared with us, um, Sarah... <laughs> um, Susan, uh, what what is the national? Right now, we're hearing a lot about the health care reform in the national scene. Uh, yeah. Some of it has Ted Kennedy's name attached to it. Some of it, people are emailing me saying support Obama's plan. Can you share shed some light on, for our listeners on you know the national questions, and then we'll try and put all this together and into right. what people should do. Okay. I can break down the major um, components of how people are going to try and deal with coverage. Okay. Right? So right now we have 40 to 60 million Americans. It kind of depends on 
how you calculate it, um, and the recession. Uh, so 40 to 60 million Americans don't have uh, access to health insurance. So how do we get those people covered? Because it really is um, exactly the kind of crisis that I described earlier. So, And that's part of why health care costs so much, is actually because there are uninsured people. And when they finally see the doctor when it's practically too late, right. that's more expensive. Right. So the, the goal is to get people covered. Um, and so there are a variety of ways to do that. One, as Sarah mentioned, um, reforming uh, the insurance industry is really key. We know that insurance companies themselves are the major obstacle to people having access to health care coverage, uh, primarily because of pre-existing con- this um, discrimination based on pre-existing condition, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Everybody knows what that is. That's if you go to a doctor for the first time in a couple of years and you've got a hurt on your back and they don't want to cover if the insurance doesn't want to cover it they're going to try and make it a pre-existing condition for some reason that means then they don't have to cover it that's some a rule that was sort of arbitrarily made up sometime in my lifetime right yeah Mm -hmm. um and it becomes a major barrier whether it means that your premiums are going to be too high uh or they're just not going to cover care related to something that you actually need taken care of, um, that becomes the real obstacle to having health insurance coverage. And then the other issue is, you know, and then the other major reason is either it's offered through your job or it isn't. So those are the areas that have to be addressed. So Mm -hmm. Congress is talking about reforming insurance in terms of standardizing um, applications, you know, having some transparency, some fairness, um, establishing rules of, you know, not being able to exclude people, um, being um, required to offer policies and renewals. Uh, and I think the, the main thing is ending the, the discrimination based on pre-existing condition. Um, they're also talking nationally about creating um, kind of a national pool of insurance policies people could choose from who don't currently have access. No, just right there. Does that, would, would that actually mean like Prudential and all these guys talk to each other and and are actually working together to, to say, here's the array of what you can choose from? I mean, they're, they're well, like standing shoulder to shoulder helping people. Uh, That's well, an you know, amazing sight to imagine oh, yes, insurance companies yes, doing. Yes, indubitably. <laughs> uh, so I have to say, I have to say that um, I think what that means is the government's going to establish some, some criteria of what is what is a um, sellable, comprehensive a health care plan, uh-huh. just like they do with car insurance. Okay. Right? Okay. Um, and so, like, just a baseline, a floor, not a ceiling. And, and those policies are going to have to be transparent and consistent, affordable, um, and there will be variety, um, and it will be up to people to, to decide what's going to be best for them. Um, but the most important piece that I feel that I want to highlight for people is that um, the Progressive Caucus in Congress has, has embraced the creation of a public health insurance option, right? Mm-hmm. So it would be the equivalent of being able to buy into Medicare. It would be the equivalent of being able to buy into the federal employees' health plan. Mm. Um, those are some options. Those are some ways to kind of think about it or understand it. And if we create that kind of possibility for Americans to choose, okay, I'm going to either have my private insurance plan that I'm buying, uh-huh. which is now a lot more affordable and reliable and fair than what it is than now, it used, okay, right, following mm-hmm. the reform, or I can get it through my job if I'm if it's there and I like it, right, okay, or I can enroll in a public program that I may be qualified for. Medicaid is still going to be there. Medicare is obviously still going to be there. Or I can buy into this other public plan. So what's the difference between the last two? Well, Medicare at this at this time is still for people 65 and older, okay. and that age may be dropped as well to let. So the the fourth older one, the, the the public health insurance program yeah. or body, yeah. that's that would be a new creation. Yeah. But it would be basically very similar to the the programs the that medic- do exist just for people who are, you know, under, under. 50. Uh, okay. And that, the reason for that is it would create some competitive pressure with the private insurers. That's a good idea. Right. Right. Um, because we know that... that they won't uh, lower prices without pressure. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. And we know that the programs that we do have, like Medicare, are, ex- are in fact, extremely um, efficient. They are viable. Right. In terms of their administrative costs. So, 
um, I think that that creates a kind of pressure on the insurance industry to help them really improve their business practices. Well, that's a really good explanation, Susan. I think, I mean, that really sounds clear. Uh, that's incredible. <laughs> <laughs>